With the world becoming more reliant on technology than ever before, it's crucial to empower people with disabilities to use websites and applications efficiently. By doing so, we enable everyone to participate fully and have access to the same information and opportunities. Accessibility is an integral part of Microsoft's identity, and Fluent UI is no exception. All our controls are built to be accessible by default, providing a stable foundation for future engineers in Microsoft to build applications. Engineers should still concentrate on making their features accessible, but they don't need to worry about building their own menus or buttons to be accessible. To achieve this accessible by default status, our work making Fluent UI an accessible library can be broadly split into a few different areas. Let's start with color contrast. This is crucial to ensure that text and visual content are legible to everyone with visual impairment. From a low vision disability to standing outside on a sunny day. Can you notice in the side-by-side -side comparison how hard it is to read the example with low color contrast between the text and the background? We adhere to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines that set standards for color contrast based on the contrast ratio between the foreground and the background. The contrast ratio should meet a minimum level of 4.5 to 1 for normal text and 3 to 1 for large text as well as icons, keyboard focus, and other graphical elements. We collaborate with our designers to avoid these problems as early as possible. One of the positive results in this area is that the scene design incorporates sets of tokens to reflect different states, such as hover, pressed, that guarantee correct contrast when used with each other. We also use tools that help us identify color contrast ratios, such as the Accessibility Insight application, which includes a color contrast analyzer that will inform developers what the contrast ratio between two colors are and under what situation the contrast ratio is appropriate. However, for some users with low vision or color blindness, this still doesn't go far enough. Luckily, operating system provides some great tooling for users already. Windows offers a high contrast mode that adjusts the colors and contrast of the entire device. This makes it easier for users with visual impairments to see and interact with the content on the screen. Windows high contrast mode does this by replacing any CSS colors based on the semantic HTML meaning of every element. In Windows High Contrast mode, the number of colors is limited to a selected set of system colors that are maintained in the CSS standard. However, these system colors themselves can be customized in the operating system settings to user preferences. Additionally, there is a high contrast media query that can be used to create style overrides that will only apply when the operating system has enabled high contrast mode to force the colors. Mac OS also offers a high contrast mode that adjusts the color scheme of the UI to provide more contrast. This mode inverts colors so that darker colors become lighter and lighter colors become darker to provide more contrast. While there are user customization for high contrast mode on macOS, such as configuring color saturation, there is no way to customize the color palette. Animation is another important visual aspect of accessibility. We need to allow users to disable motion-based animations since they can cause distractions or nausea to some users. Historically, we've come up with some interesting ways to do this in Fluent UI. Recently, we've gotten some great help from the operating system and browsers. Mobile and desktop operating systems can enable and disable animation effects. This user setting can be detected by browser with a media query. Using the Reduced Motion Media Query, we can override any default animation-related styles when users disable animations through their operating system. Let's talk about screen reader narration. Screen readers are assistive software that convert the text on the screen into speech or braille output. It enables individuals with visual impairments and other disabilities like dyslexia or light sensitivities to interact with the computer. Screen readers can also provide additional information about the context and functionality of different types of controls, such as buttons, links, or menus, so that users can have certain expectations about how to interact with content. You would think that making a website look nice is important. However, HTML is a markup language intended to build documents. We need to style it correctly, but even before that, we need to structure a page correctly so that they're understandable not only for our eyes, but also for other assistive technologies. A good start would be to use semantic elements, roles, and ARIA attributes where they're needed. However, that's only a part of the work we need to do to make sure that Fluent UI controls can reach the widest possible audience. We also need to make sure that we support all major screen readers, which can be a challenge. Although ARIA roles are part of the standard maintained by the W3C, practical support from browsers, screen readers, 
and other assistive tech like voice control isn't uniform. There are times where we can't use specific roles or ARIA attributes and resort to workarounds because there's no full support across all assistive tech. Sometimes we've also observed that the standards don't go far enough and need to catch up with the development of UI. Microsoft works in some of the most complex web applications out there on the internet. The features can go beyond the current defined set of control patterns. We're creating applications as fully featured as native desktop apps on a platform that wasn't designed for it, and accessibility features have long been playing catch up to what people are building on the web. We, the Fluent UI team, continuously learn from these applications. We regularly report issues to screen reader authors and tweak the library along with their recommendations to developers, all to make sure that Microsoft web applications offer as much support to assistive tech as possible. The last aspect is about interacting with our controls using the keyboard. This generally involves the concept of browser focus and keyboard navigation. This starts with ensuring that interactive content can be navigated forwards using tab and backwards using shift tab following the DOM order in HTML. It's important that the DOM order matches the visual order of interactive elements. A screen reader's virtual cursor will follow DOM order, and users may switch between using virtual cursor and tabbing. Without this, it's not a very intuitive UX for keyboard users. For example, you should never change the order of interactive elements using CSS or positive tab indexes. The result will be very frustrating for keyboard or screen reader users who might not be able to navigate without being disoriented. Fluent UI is oriented towards developing web applications. Using only tab to navigate the interactive elements on a page is perfectly fine for more traditional websites like Wikipedia. These websites display large amounts of content which should be browsed. Applications like email or chat clients aka Outlook Online and Teams, need to allow keyboard users to navigate in a more efficient way. This is done by using composite widgets that are reachable by tab, but navigation inside those widget controls is done by other means, such as the up and down arrow. Users can press tab again to focus out of the entire control and move to the next interactive element or widget. The complexity of keyboard navigation patterns tend to increase with the complexity of the UI control. In Fluent UI, we have controls such as menus, grids, trees, and combo boxes. For example, the upcoming tree component in Fluent UI should support a whole array of different navigation commands. And these aren't even the full set. These nine different behaviors are completely different from each other, and that's not even an exhaustive list when you consider that tree items can also be selectable. Modal dialogues can also hold their own special place in the world of focus management. All modal dialogues will need to implement a focus trap so that users are not able to interact with the rest of the page content. Modal dialogues need a focus trap because they temporarily take over the focus of the application, and the user should not be able to navigate away from the dialog until they've completed a required task. Without a focus trap, keyboard users might accidentally navigate away from it. One of the hardest focus-related challenges that we work on is dealing with nested focusable elements. Normally, this would never happen on primitive elements like menu items or buttons, but rather grids or lists. It's important to make sure that the user can navigate through them in a logical and intuitive way. Unfortunately, the real-world features that need to use nested focusable elements are complex, and they need to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. One example would be the chat in the Teams application. Each chat message there needs to be focusable, and the user should be able to navigate through chat messages using the arrow keys. However, each chat message can also contain different focusable elements, such as hyperlinks, buttons, or menus. We've designed the focus handling in Fluent UI to be as flexible as possible to accommodate these very non-standard edge cases. What makes focus management even harder is that browser focus is global, which means that only one element can ever be focused at any time. With all the keyboard navigation behaviors that exist in Fluent UI to move focus on demand, we need to make sure that they work together properly. We can't just consider our own controls fighting for focus. The applications that use our controls might also want to move browser focus somewhere else. Then we have the focus battles. Good keyboard navigation does not only benefit people with disabilities. Many people use the keyboard as a primary input method in many cases for efficiency. Keyboard shortcuts can allow users to perform common tasks quickly and easily in an application without using a mouse or excessive tabbing. Overall, keyboard navigation can be a great tool for power users looking to maximize their productivity and streamline their workflows. I'm sure there are plenty of developers that use Vim who would agree. In the real world, we had a situation where a keyboard shortcut being broken impacted a large financial trading customer. Without that shortcut, their employees would need to spend more time completing a specific task with a mouse. And in their case, time is literally money. We've decided to split up the massive topic of web accessibility to add some structure to the episode and to make it easier for you, the viewer, to understand. To make Fluent UI accessible, we need to deliver all these different areas in one single package. In many ways, you can't consider one without the other. For example, 
Focus indicators also need to meet the color contrast requirements to be just as visible as any other content. Another common trap to fall into is to consider that all screen reader users are blind, whereas in fact they can be useful for people with other types of disabilities. It's important that we don't consider screen reader narration separately from other visual accessibility requirements. It's a lot, and we don't always succeed the first time. We're committed to improving the accessibility of Fluent UI controls all the time. No aspects are optional for us. When working on Microsoft products, all features should have an accessibility spec and need to be tested thoroughly for accessibility before being released. Applications in production are also tested regularly to make sure they maintain our high levels of accessibility standards. In addition to only testing for compliance, one of the areas we're actively working on improving is getting feedback on the overall usability of a product from people with disabilities. When we create controls for Fluent UI, we don't consider accessibility as an add-on or an extra layer of architecture that can be broken out into a separate module. It's an approach that we've tried in the past, which leads to accessible features as a secondary priority. Modular accessibility was also hard to maintain because accessibility flaws in design can't be fixed with surface-level semantic wallpaper. Now we treat accessibility as a core feature that is no different from handling mouse interactions. This process starts as early as the design phase, where our designers deliver specs with high contrast variants for every state of every control. Each design spec is also jointly reviewed by developers and designers. We identify any obvious accessibility concerns or unknowns, and these are then addressed before moving forward to the technical spec and implementation. In this next phase, developers working on a control will write a technical spec that needs to include the proposed accessible markup and keyboard navigation patterns. Fluent UI controls are also developed along with usage documentation. The documentation generally includes accessibility guidance for common scenarios. For example, the documentation for our dialogue control contains examples of how to control focus when it is opened. Developers can build from those examples to tweak the first element focus to be the most meaningful action. It might not always be useful for the user to open a new dialogue and focus on the dismiss button, for example. We spend a lot of effort to document these accessibility best practices for common scenarios so that it reduces the amount of time that developers need to come to the same conclusions before dropping a Fluent UI control in their application. Our support for assistive tech also doesn't stop with screen readers and keyboards or with a specific platform such as Windows. We test and support our controls for different platforms such as mobile with Android and iOS. We also support other assistive tech like touch screen readers and switch devices and voice control. In order to support the many Microsoft web applications such as Teams, Word Online, or Outlook Online, the Fluent UI library is designed for apps first. This means that the problems that we deal with to make our controls accessible go far beyond the standard web accessibility best practices. These challenges we face come from the real apps that millions of people are using daily. We've also learned a lot from the success and from the failures from previous versions of the Fluent UI library. We're never going to finish our goal of making Fluent UI accessible by default, but we're also never going to stop working on it. You're like all are controlled, like some big brother, like, <laughs> like oh, oh, controlled, controlled. Just intense, like stares. Yeah. Like. We're good, right? We're good. This is so good. We're good.